Hi and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith and in this video we're going to learn the two to four player game Godzilla Tokyo Clash designed by Prospero Hall and published by Funko Games who helped sponsor this video. As one of Earth's most terrifying kaiju, you will fight to become the most feared monster in Japan, throwing tanks, smashing buildings, and fighting tooth and claw until you become king of the monsters. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, place this single center hex tile in the middle of the play area. Then randomly select and arrange the remaining tiles around it in the shape shown in the rule book and on screen here, which is based on the number of players. In this video, I'll be setting up a two-player game, so it should look something like this when you're done, and then any extra tiles can be returned to the box. The first time you open the game, you'll find tiles for all of the buildings, which will match the space for them underneath. Press them in place like I've already done here, and once in, they will stay there for all future games. There are five building types in the game. Radar dishes, power plants, military bunkers, towers, and small buildings. On screen, you see the letter codes for each one. You then look for these same codes on the tiles and place the matching buildings onto them. Now lay out this damage track, putting this oxygen destroyer on the start space here. Then give a random player this King of the Monsters token. They will take the first turn of the round and then turns will go in clockwise order after that. But this also matters during the setup, as we'll see. Here we have the deck of event cards, and you'll now put two of them by the track, one above and one below. For your first game, they recommend Armored Assault and Rush Hour, which we'll use. The rest of them can then be returned to the box. Each event has setup instructions on their back, and here we're told for Armored Assault that we need to find these tank tokens, and then in player order, each person puts two tanks on separate non-water spaces at the edge of the board that don't already contain tanks. And just so it's clear, the water spaces look like this. Once every player has added their tanks, any extras go back to the box. To set up the Rush Hour event, it says to take all of the train tokens. You'll notice some spaces show track like this. In player order, each person puts a single train on any empty track, but at most only one train can go on any single tile. If there are more trains to place than tiles with track, just replace tiles on the board with ones from the box that do show tracks. And once each player has put a train on the board, return any extras to the box. Now every player picks one of the Kaiju monsters. If this is your first game, they recommend using Godzilla and Megalon. You should then collect the matching mat and figure, as well as the labeled cards for your monster, which you'll shuffle into a face down deck to the left of your mat. Also place one of these energy tracking cubes onto the number two space of your energy track here. Looking back at the setup diagram, you'll now find the player's starting locations marked in red, and you now put your monster on that space. However, if your starting space happens to have one of these large buildings, that is, any of the plastic ones, then rotate the tile so that your starting space doesn't have one of those large buildings in it, and then put your figure there. Now each player draws a starting hand of five cards from their deck, and that's the setup. In Godzilla Tokyo Clash, each player represents a powerful creature from the Godzilla universe, battling for domination over the other monsters while the city battles back to try and stop the destruction. Have the most dominance points from your conquest during the game, and you'll be declared King of the Monsters. The game is played over a series of rounds, and each round is broken into four phases, starting with the Oxygen Destroyer phase. But this phase is skipped during the very first round of the game, so we'll come back and look at that a little bit later. Next, it's the Action phase. Here, turns are taken in clockwise order around and around the table, starting with the person who is holding the King of Monsters token. On your turn, you'll either take an action or pass. If you pass on a turn, you can still take an action when it comes back to you again, but once every player has passed in a row, one after the other, the phase ends. So let's discuss the actions, and one option is to play a kaiju card from your hand. These will have an energy cost here in the top right hand corner, and you must be able to pay that to play the card. Just move your cube here by that amount. Then once paid for, you resolve all of the card's effects found in this area here, and these may be made up of symbols and written instructions. But let's go over the symbols first. This is the symbol for a move, which lets you move your figure up to the number of spaces shown with it, so three in this case. And when moving, you can go through or end your move on spaces with water, vehicles, small buildings, 
or even other kaiju. But if a space has a plastic building, and all of these are known as large buildings, then you can move through them, but can't end on a space with one. Sometimes a card will show several symbols, and you can perform any or all of them. This here is the symbol for an attack, and its value is three, as we see here. For an attack like this, you must be in the same space as your target, which will either be a kaiju or a vehicle token. If your target is another kaiju, then you must decide whether you're going to directly attack it or throw it. But if your target is a vehicle, your only option is to throw it. So let's talk about throwing things and set up an example for that. When throwing something, the attack value becomes the maximum distance that thing can be tossed in a straight line. So three spaces in this case. And a straight line is any line that crosses over a full border of the space that you're in. So I could toss this tank in this direction, this way, or over here. Once you know what you're throwing, how far you can throw it, and in what direction, you can then use that to target a small or large building, a vehicle, or other kaiju. You could even target one of those objects in your own space. If you target a vehicle or a building, the vehicle that you threw along with the target are destroyed and you flip them over and remove them from the map, gaining the rewards on their underside. When you see a black printed number, you gain that value in energy. So in this case, we'd gain a total of five energy, which you'll record on your monster map. To show this, move your cube up on the track here, but keep in mind you can never have more energy than this maximum amount. In addition to energy, you may find other benefits based on the symbols that you see. For example, when you destroy a power plant, in addition to energy, you also draw a card from your deck. For destroying one of these military bunkers, in addition to gaining two energy, you also place any one card from your discard pile onto the top of your deck. After destroying a radar dish and collecting its energy, you can then look at the top card of any opponent's deck, and after you've seen it, you place it back on top. When small buildings get destroyed, in addition to the energy that you gain, place them on the damage track beginning in the space marked for your number of players, so two players in this case. Then fill future ones into the next available spaces that head towards the oxygen destroyer marker. And we'll see the importance of all of this a little bit later. When vehicles or other tokens are destroyed that came from events picked during the setup, just set them aside once you've collected their energy because they may come back later in the game. Also note that if you target a kaiju with a thrown vehicle, the vehicle is destroyed and the opponent takes one damage. And if there's more than one kaiju in the target space, you pick which one is hit. Don't forget, when using an attack to throw, you can also throw a kaiju rather than a vehicle. Though there are a couple of differences, and to help explain these, I'm going to get out one of the other monsters we aren't using in this setup, just to help with some of the examples. First, the enemy kaiju you're going to throw must be in your space, and then you throw it a number of spaces in any straight line up to the value shown here. Though it will stop if it encounters a large building or another kaiju first. So if it was thrown in this direction, it would have to stop here where this large building is. You then destroy up to one small building or vehicle in each space the kaiju was thrown through along with the space it was tossed into. So I might destroy this small building from this space, but I should mention if the kaiju ends up in a space with a large building, then that must be your target. The building is destroyed, but the kaiju doesn't take any damage. Now if the building hadn't been here, and instead this had landed in a space with another kaiju, then both the monster thrown and the one hit take one damage each. And if there had been more than one kaiju in the target space, the attacker would choose which one gets hit. Sometimes an attack will have a range value with it. And this will let you target a monster either in your space or one up to a number of spaces away in a straight line equal to the value here. Any buildings, vehicles, or other kaiju between you and your intended target will not interfere with your attack. Just note that ranged attacks can never be used to throw things and can only be used to target a kaiju with direct damage. Speaking of which, anytime you use one of these attack symbols, rather than throw, you can always just use this value as direct damage against the monster in your space, or one at a distance if the attack has range. But no matter how damage is being dealt to a kaiju, the player being attacked can attempt to defend with a card from their hand if they want. For example, on the left we have a card played for direct damage against an opponent, and on the right we have a card the opponent just played in response. Cards with this symbol represent defense and will show a value. After paying to play the card, the opponent will then compare their defense value to the attack. If the attack is equal to or lower than the defense, the attack is blocked and nothing more happens. 
However, if the attack value is higher than the defense or the defender didn't play a card at all, then the defense value, if any, is subtracted from the attack value and that becomes the number of cards that the attacker will draw from the target's deck. They will then secretly look at the dominance values on the cards drawn, which are shown with this symbol here, and then they take the card with the highest value. The rest of the cards are put into the opponent's discard pile. The card the attacker claimed is now put face down in their trophy pile, which is found by their name next to the track here, where it will be worth points at the end of the game. And while players are allowed to know how many trophies you've collected, the values on them are kept secret from the other players. Let's go back to our example where Godzilla had an attack value of 2, and we'll say that Megalon didn't play a defense card. That means the Godzilla player will draw two cards from Megalon's deck, and then be able to keep one as a trophy. However, the exception is that you can never take a card if the dominance value is zero. So if after drawing from their deck, every card had a dominance of zero, then you don't get to take any. These will just go to the opponent's discard pile. Now, if you did damage an opponent, whether you claimed a trophy or not, if they were holding the King of Monsters token, then now you take it from them. And we'll see the value of this a little bit later. One of the important things to understand about an attack is that you can never directly attack a building or vehicle with a card's attack strength. Instead, vehicles and buildings are only destroyed when things are thrown. Sometimes the attack card will list other effects here, and if so, you should resolve them if they apply. Likewise, when used for defense, the card might have other effects to resolve as well. And we won't go through all these various effects that you might find listed on cards, as they're all explained directly on them. That said, there are some specific keywords you might encounter that we should discuss. If a card says momentum, then after it is resolved, you may play an additional card from your hand or take your kaiju's discard action, which we'll learn about shortly. However, as long as you continue to play cards that say momentum, then you'll be able to keep taking action after action until you take a discard action or play a card that doesn't say momentum. Most cards you play after you resolve their effects will then be put immediately into your discard pile. However, some will say enhancement here, and if so, they are put into play in the area directly below your kaiju mat here and then their listed benefits will remain in effect until their cards are removed. And you can have any number of enhancements in play at a time. Now remember earlier, I said that on your turn, you will either play a card for its effects or use your Kaiju's discard action. So let's see how that works. Your Kaiju will have two discard actions listed here on its mat. And to take one of these, you just discard any one card you are holding, you ignore its printed text, and you don't have to pay its cost here. And then you resolve either of these powers. Also note that each monster has its own unique ability up in this area of its map. Read it over and it will explain how it's used. Rather than take an action on your turn, you can also just pass. And as I mentioned earlier, if it comes back around to your turn again, you can then take an action at that time if you like, or just pass again. And once everyone is passed, one after the other, the action phase will end and you move on to the refresh phase. Now I should point out, there's no limit to the number of cards that you can have in your hand while playing. But during this refresh phase, players can now choose to discard or keep any number of cards they are holding. And then if they have fewer than five cards, they draw back up until they're holding five again. The player holding the King of Monsters token now gets to draw one extra card as shown here, bringing their hand to a total of six cards. I should also mention if at any point your deck runs out of cards when you would need to draw some, then reshuffle your discard pile into a new draw deck. Also, before the refresh phase is over, resolve any enhancements or special kaiju abilities that you may have that say they activate now. Then it's time for the event phase. Here you activate both event cards in order, resolving the top one fully before going to the bottom one. We won't go through each of the events as their effects are described on them, but I will mention that some may require moving vehicles towards the nearest kaiju. If there are ever two or more that are equally close to the moving vehicle, then it will move towards the King of the Monsters, even if the King wasn't involved in that tie. Also, after the target is picked, if the vehicle could finish in more than one place, the player who is last in the current turn order decides where the vehicle will go. Before starting a new round, you now check to see if the game has ended by looking at the damage track. In just a moment, we'll be seeing how this Oxygen Destroyer moves, but if it and the small building tokens have passed each other on the track, then it means that last round was the last round of the game, and now it's over. Otherwise, it will continue with a new round. And remember, at the beginning of the video, we said a round begins with the Oxygen Destroyer phase, but it skipped during the first round. 
So let's see how this phase works now. It's very simple. All you have to do is move this marker one space forward. As you can see, as more rounds pass and this moves and more small buildings are destroyed, the game will get closer and closer to ending. If it's this marker crossing the buildings on the board during the first phase of the game, you still play the entire round and then the game ends. If instead during the round the destruction of small buildings causes the marker to be crossed, then you keep playing until the end of that round and then the game is over. But however it ends, it's then time to check the final scoring. Each player will now total the dominance values on the cards that were in their trophy pile. And the player who is currently holding the King of Monsters token also gets two extra points as shown here. Now the player with the most points wins. And in the case of a tie, the tied player with the most energy wins. And if there's still a tie, the tied player holding the King of the Monster token wins. Now if none of the tied players have this token, then the tied player seated closest to the left of the one holding this token will win. But otherwise, that's how you play Godzilla Tokyo Clash. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.